In this video, we'll look at several tips and tricks that will save you a ton of time when you're designing with Figma. We'll start with a few basic tips and then get into the more advanced stuff, so stick around until the end of the video. Tip number one is to use components. Components are amazing for automating your design process in Figma and really just make things a lot more efficient. A component is pretty much an element that you can repurpose in your Figma design file or across multiple files. So if we look at a quick example here, imagine I want to add a button to the screen that allows users to add this product to their order. Instead of creating the button from scratch, I can actually leverage one of these components that I created here on the left. And to use that, I'll hold option on the keyboard and that creates an instance of this component. I can actually use that in my designs. I'll just resize that and then change the text to add to order. Pretty easy, right? And what's awesome about these components is if I make any changes to the main components that I have here on the left, it'll actually ripple across to the instances that I use in my design. So for instance, if I change the color of the secondary button, something like red, you can see that those changes are reflected in the instances as well. And this just really speeds up your design process because you don't have to go screen by screen and make those changes individually. You can just do them to the main component. What's also great about components is if I want to swap this component style for a primary button style, for instance, instead of removing this and then adding a new instance, what I can do is just click on this secondary button. And then here on the right, I'll swap this instance for primary button that just quickly updates the style. And I'll do the same with this minus button here. We can change this to less active and that also swaps the instance. And if you're interested in learning more about components, I have a much more comprehensive tutorial on how to use components in Figma and it really covers the ins and outs and I'll be sure to share that link in the description below. The next thing we'll do is add images to each one of these placeholders. So let's start by selecting the first placeholder. So I'll click into this group and then click into this auto layout group and that allows me to select the placeholder. A much faster way to do that though is holding command on the keyboard and selecting the actual placeholder I want. And that just takes me to the nested element within this group. And you don't have to click a bunch of times to actually get to that layer. So now that it's selected, I can actually add an image here. Um, so I'll go to a website like Unsplash. We'll copy this image and then just paste it directly into Figma using Command V. And that just pastes the image into the actual placeholder and it keeps that size of the placeholder. Now, if I want to add multiple images at the same time, what I can do is select all of these different thumbnails using command and shift on the keyboard. And then I'll hit command shift K and that opens up my finder here on Mac and I can select multiple images. Choose open. We're adding those images into Figma. And now I can go one by one and just bulk add all of these images, which is a lot faster. The next tip is a quick way to copy styles within your Figma file. So let's imagine I want this text here to look like this text here that says espresso shot. So what I'll do is select this text and then I'll hit command option C on the keyboard. And now I'll select this text here and I'll hit command option V. And as you can see, what I've done is copy this style and then pasted it on this text. And now they effectively look the same. Here's another very simple tip, which is how to use spell check within Figma. So Figma just recently added spell check, which is amazing. And it saves you a lot of pain uh, with typos. Um, and what you can do to use spell check is just click into a text box and it will just underline the words that are spelt incorrectly in red, like any other software out there. Um, and this is amazing because it just works within Figma. You don't have to add any plugins or anything. Um, and you know, you can update your spelling and everything will be spelt correctly. The next tip I have for you is to use Smart Animate to create beautiful transitions within Figma in your prototypes. So let's imagine I want to create a new screen here where I go from this screen to this new screen and essentially this image goes full bleed and then it moves to the top of the screen and then I have some new text that comes in. Now if I quickly connect 
these two screens with prototype mode here in the top right. I'll select this about, and then I'll drag this node to connect the screens. Then I can preview that. When I click about, you'll notice it's a pretty standard transition there. But if I select this link here, and then here in the interaction details, I go from instant to smart animate, then I go back to our prototype, and I click on about, you'll notice that that image kind of seamlessly grows. There's a nice animation there. And I really didn't have to do anything. All I had to do is use that same image, um, and it kind of changes in size and animates nicely. Um, and I'll actually have this text fade in as well. So to do that, I'll copy this text, paste it on the original screen, and then we'll knock out the opacity to zero. And we'll go back to the prototype, click on play. You'll notice that that text now fades in. So obviously this is a quick walkthrough of prototyping um, and smart animate in Figma. Again, I have another full tutorial on this and I'll link that in the description below. Be sure to check that out, uh, but definitely use smart animate when you're prototyping in Figma. The next tip is to use auto layout. Now auto layout is an awesome feature that allows you to create objects that respond dynamically to different types of content. So let's look at a very basic example of auto layout. Imagine I want to add a button to the bottom of this screen. So what I'll do is make the frame a little bit larger. Just expand that. And then we'll create a button here with auto layout. So we'll start with the text. Learn more. And we'll change that to bold. Then we'll add an icon to this button. So I'll just create an instance of this plus sign. And have that to the right of learn more. And now with both of these elements selected, I'll hit Shift A on the keyboard. What that does is create an auto layout frame. So you can see that on the left here in the layers has the auto layout symbol. And then on the right, you'll see the auto layout section as well, where you can configure the properties of this button. So the first thing we'll do is add a stroke. So you can actually see that it's a button. And then here in the auto layout section, let's add some padding. So we can add some horizontal padding and then some vertical padding as well. And then let's align everything towards the center. And now here's the magic of auto layout. So now when I change this text to really long text, you can see that the button automatically expands to accommodate that text. And again, this is just a very simple example, but you should be using auto layout for most elements in your designs. It just makes things a lot easier and it's gonna speed up your design process. This next tip is great if you collaborate with other people and share your Figma file on a regular basis. So typically to share your file, you'd go to share here in the top right and go through all these steps. What you can do instead is actually just hit Command L on the keyboard. And what that does is actually copies a link to the file to your clipboard, and then you can share that via email or Slack, and that will just open up your Figma file. What I also do is select a specific frame, and then I'll hit Command L with that frame selected. And what this does is actually takes whoever's opening that link to that specific frame. And I use this all the time if I'm working with another designer or teammate um, and we're referencing a design, I'll actually just share the link to that specific frame so they don't have to dig through the Figma file and look for the screen that I'm referencing. So this next tip might be my favorite and something that I use all of the time. So let's imagine I want to export this design so I can use in a Google Slides um, or Slack and share with a, with a teammate. Um, typically, I have to click on the frame and then export and do all that. Um, instead, I can actually just select the frame and then hit Command Shift C on the keyboard. And then that copies that design to a PNG. And now when I go to Google Slides, I can hit Command V to paste. And that will just automatically paste that design as a PNG into really any tool um, or software on your computer. So like Slack, Google Slides, email, um, and it's just a lot faster than actually exporting these designs and then selecting that file and then uploading to your new tool. Um, this also works within Figma. So if I just wanna you know, copy this design as a PNG and then paste it here in Figma as well, I can do that and that kind of rasterizes all the layers um, and I don't need to, to worry about this changing. It's just a PNG that I can use anywhere in the file. Thanks for watching this video on Figma tips and tricks. 
Remember to like, subscribe, or leave a comment below. And then also check out butteracademy.com if you want to learn more about our full UX design course. The course covers the UX design process with tutorials and videos just like this one. Thank <laughs> you.